Greetings, stackers. Sorry I've been absent for a few days. I took a break from coins to pop over for a long weekend to Boston, Massachusetts and had a fabulous time with uh, a great ice hockey match between the Bruins and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Reenactment of the Boston Massacre and uh, immersion in history for a couple of days. Well, the subject of today's video is collecting gold coins. A few years ago, before I started uh, collecting the way that I have been over the last few years, I collected a few silver coins. Silver, not very expensive. Anybody can collect a few ounces of silver. But of course, with coins, one thing leads to another. And before you know it, you have your first gold coin in your possession. If you're over in the US, it might be a one-tenth of an ounce gold eagle. If you're in the UK, it might be, say, a half a sovereign. But a number of you have started in that small way. And one thing leads to another. And then before you look round, you've got um, half a dozen sovereigns or a full set of eagles or a tube of tenth of an ounce eagles and uh, I have to say that over the last few years this has been a pretty good idea. In December 2013 gold was uh, at a low of I think $1,075-$1,080. Uh, today gold is about $1,650. Uh, so most people who started that pursuit when I did and then gradually collected month by month, year by year, more of these types of items have uh, have done pretty well. I don't know whether it's better to have collected bullion during that time or numismatics. I think it very depends on how astute you are as a collector. But anyone who, who just made a systematic uh, cost averaged collection of regular bullion coins has done um, extremely well and probably over that time has done better than putting money away in stocks and shares and certainly if you've been um, looking at the market over the last couple of weeks since the coronavirus um, story started to emerge then uh, you've probably been pretty glad if you had made that investment in gold and silver and bullion as opposed to stocks and shares during that time uh, although those um, you know those investments have also had a pretty good uplift and uh, we were probably due for a little bit of a market correction anyway uh, and of course once this crisis is over then a lot of those stocks and share investments will then go back up to uh, pretty much where they were when uh, the auto cell systems started to kick in and cause market chaos. Whilst the choices of coins you see here might seem uh, pretty high-end, a little bit esoteric, a little bit specialised, people often ask me where do I start? What, uh, what coins should I collect? I haven't got any gold uh, at the moment. Where should I go? A lot depends on your location and, uh, and what is the easiest coin to uh, to liquidate if you want cash when you're starting but in the UK at least and uh, in Europe there are lots of choices um, between sovereigns for the UK maybe uh, European 20 franc or 20 lira or 20 anything gold pieces which are pretty much the same as a sovereign can be a really good starting point my advice is always um, right at the beginning until you really understand how this very specialized market works then stick to um, bullion coins only and try and pick coins that are priced at bullion but have something interesting about them and that applies to a lot of sovereigns you can buy uh, guineas in bad condition you can buy sovereigns sometimes in very good condition for pretty close to uh, to bullion value maybe spot plus between 
two and uh, two and seven percent, depending on the type of sovereign it is. But you're not playing with very much in terms of risk apart from the spot price. If you stick to that kind of advice, at least until you've really understood uh, how the market works. There are lots of sources for those first few gold coins and uh, the important thing is to find somebody who you can really trust to uh, to buy from. Um, a lot of people like um, eBay, uh, although eBay has some pretty unscrupulous sellers and some really bad buyers uh, that I've experienced. Um, Facebook groups can be very good because that's a kind of trusted location for the exchange of these kind of coins um, and other members of those Facebook groups who are trusted will then vouch for other members who are selling coins and there are some safeguards from what I've seen most people don't lose in those kind of uh, environments. In the UK and uh, around Europe there's lots of precious metal dealers uh, in the UK people ask where should I go I always recommend places like uh, Hatton Garden Metals, Atkinson's, Chards uh, and uh, of course, the Coin Connection, who is uh, one of our sponsors of these videos, and uh, without whose help and support, it would be difficult to keep producing these videos um, all the time. If you're over in the States, then some of the people I use most often are Atmex, uh, Pinehurst Coins, um, and perhaps Liberty Coin, but uh, the key to get somebody who, uh, who you trust and take a look at one very important thing and that is whatever you're planning to buy, take a look at the dealer's buying price from you. Uh, maybe call up and see how much the dealer's willing to give you for the item that you're thinking about buying. Horace is always hungry and what is Horace hungry for? Why? Quality coins from thecoinconnection.co.uk, the home of quality checked modern coins for collectors. I think it's probably fair to say that most of the people whose coins you see here being submitted for grading at NGC started with just one gold coin, started off with one bullion sovereign, and their collections and interest were sparked from that point. And uh, where did they end up? Well, a lot of people seem to just repeat the same thing over and over again. Uh, I've noticed a lot of people collecting special date coins, uh, collecting coins of different design types, uh, collecting uh, strike on the day sovereigns, special year sovereigns, uh, proof sovereigns, there are, there's quite a lot of interest in modern coins. You'd expect maybe a lot more interest in older coins, but I've noticed over the last couple of years uh, a massive interest in modern issue coins. Um, of course, some of these coins are highly desirable, very low mintages, but you do have to watch out and you have to be very careful which ones you go for because... Um, all of these coins are products of mints that have to charge quite a big premium to cover their marketing cost and uh, sales costs and so on. And quite often it's a good idea to have just a few of those kind of coins plus a number of older coins or a number of coins that you pick up as pre-loved coins in the secondary market. And, uh, and you tend to find that quite a few of these coins will be lower price relatively in the secondary market because the premium has uh, effectively already been factored in to the price of the coin. And, uh, and therefore, those older versions uh, may be not, uh, not the one everybody is hunting for right at this moment, but they could be, in a way, a better buy. I don't suggest you buy all um, spot-based lower-value coins, but I do think that you should have both in your collection, 
once you get going. And assuming you really want uh, gold coins to be something that you collect for a few years. The coin you're looking at here is actually a half sovereign, uh, 1884, but it is a pretty rare coin. Might have a few problems, but it is a Melbourne mint half sovereign, and all Melbourne mint half sovereigns are pretty rare. I think it was an 1886 actually, not a four, but you've got a little M there for Melbourne, and all Australian half sovereigns in the 1880s are pretty rare coins. And I think this just really shows nicely the the interest in gold coins because you can often you know having seen enough of them find one or two that have a story and a level of interest or a rare year or a rare mint mark or an error or a variety or an overstrike and I, it seems to me a lot of the people who are captivated by these items over a period of time usually tend to gravitate towards things that are rare as opposed to continuing to invest just in spot-based items. Um, I'm actually not totally convinced that people make more money by focusing on these very rare numismatic items, but I do think it adds a level of interest and an intrigue, and that helps them, um, I suppose, keep up with their collections, maybe a little bit more, invest more, and I've always thought of collecting gold coins as being more of a way of saving in an interesting way, as opposed to necessarily investment. I think, um, you know, for me anyway, it's managed to uh, hold my interest for quite a long time and uh, allow me to save cash that I wouldn't otherwise have saved. Uh, I might have got interested in something else, Maybe uh, maybe fast cars or something like that, which depreciate a lot. Or I might have gone out for more holidays or more meals. But, um, you know, I don't really think of this as a traditional investment. I think that, you know, there's a case for saying things like property, real estate uh, is actually a more suitable long-term investment than holding a lot of gold coins. But if you are careful and continual in what you do with gold coins then it's quite possible to then sell those coins and and that will facilitate maybe a larger investment uh, maybe doing something uh, commonsensical like buying a, uh, a, a rental property or something like that or maybe something uh, totally crazy like uh, buying a, uh, a fast boat or something like that uh, you know, or fulfilling some other kind of life uh, dream. I feel that in some ways I've been doing this for quite a time, but I've only just scraped the surface of what's possible. Uh, if you take a look at um, European auctions of gold coins, you can see there's thousands of different varieties, uh, none of which I have in my collection, none of which I've ever bought or collected or sold. Um, and that also applies probably to a lot of American gold coins as well. So it's something that, um, you know, you can build up a collection, you can sell the collection, you can become totally interested all over again in another part of the, uh, the gold coin market. Uh, maybe it's um, hammered gold coins, maybe old European coins, maybe treasure coins from uh, you know Spain, Portugal and those kind of areas. There are so many different things to, uh, to be able to get interested in. Uh, and a lot of those things have pretty intricate histories going back hundreds of years and uh, the ability to collect these items and learn a little bit about their history as well is uh, certainly something that's uh, pretty good fun to do if you enjoy that kind of um, that kind of knowledge and have an interest in uh, in history anyway. Thanks very much for watching today's video, and uh, there will be a few more along pretty quickly now that I'm back from my uh, little trip to Boston.